Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One take and uncut. Please pay attention to this video. I'm going to go over some very interesting points by the end of this. So right here, XRP trade volume, guys. We are on XRPcharts.ripple.com if you want to refer back to this. Talking about overall the last 24 hours of volume and what is important and what is you know important to distinguish and realize. As we know, many people confuse this. So we see the XRP trade volume itself, and it says all exchanges. We see what? Over $200 million. Okay. Now, what I want to emphasize is that this is not just utility. Utility right now, unfortunately, is a small portion of this volume. A lot of this is wash trading. A lot of this volume is fake, completely artificial, similar to what we see in a lot of global markets today, especially the derivatives market, especially with gold and all of these paper notes. A lot of this is going to correct, and we are undergoing a transformation, you know, an economic transfer of wealth as well as we, you know, you can't really deny it at this point. We see the status of the petrodollar going going down oil for the first time ever like going historically low to negative value um, there's just so much happening on a global landscape both macro and micro that you cannot deny that we are going towards a digital world but again the old system does have to kind of suffer has to burn for something new to rise so right here, XRP trade volume, as we can see, historically, at least in the past, there was always a two to one ratio versus, you know, this overall trade volume versus, of course, we can see the actual XRP ledger payment volume. OK, so you can see the XRP ledger trade volume. OK, and then the XRP ledger payment volume. We need to pay attention to this ledger payment volume. Now, with on demand liquidity, Ripple Net Partners using XRP, it goes over the XRP ledger one time that's important so you have to understand the two to one ratio this is kind of the ground floor we need this value to rise substantially a portion of this is utility based as the ground floor rises even with speculation and negative news utility has the base ground floor so is the base price of xrp really two cents is it really 12 cents is it you know 15 cents who knows what i'm saying is over time as the volume increases there's more trades over the ledger itself then we can at least increase the price points and value that we're sending over the ledger and this will actually pull the utility ground floor up now with speculation if there's a bull run or the you know the fractal of the pattern or even bitcoin pulls the market up awesome but that's speculative that's not necessarily sustainable the market swings we can go back to you know a twenty thousand dollar bitcoin or we can go down to a three thousand dollar bitcoin that is just how the market acts okay it's all just a wave now what happens though is when bitcoin goes to 20k or if it ever does what happens it pulls the market up xrp will probably get some of that volume bring the price up so speculatively the speculative side of the market pulls the price up therefore increasing the payment size that you can send over the xrp ledger for at least on-demand liquidity customers so the speculative nature actually can have a benefit towards raising the ground floor even further but again we're at what a two-year low at this point and it i know it's very very you know unbearable to experience all of this <clears throat> and you know i apologize i'm kind of battling a cough so i'm trying not to sniffle or clear my throat too much but that is something to understand that the speculative side of the market can actually bring price up and actually further establish a new ground floor i do not believe the ground floor is 20 cents unfortunately i believe we could go lower but personally i am very bullish per the fractal in the pattern and where we have been in the market so we can see the various currency pairs and i just wanted to refer back to this i'm going to be talking about codius i'm going to be talking a little bit about polysign and i'm going to be talking about entering you know into the derivatives market which XRP is believed to actually really accomplish and run as the backbone of this new financial system in tandem with other groups, of course, and cryptos, including Ethereum and many other successful digital assets. But I believe that many will die along the way and only maybe the top 50, 100 that solve a real purpose after regulation have the true backing will be around. All right. So here we go. So right here, Bob Way, one of the first Ripple employees, guys, this is shared by Anders Lundberg. This is Bob Way corresponding with us. I'm just going to read this verbatim. So back in 2019, he says this, the mechanism is meant to drive XRP into the bridge currency position. Again, XRP is that intermediary between two different fiats to connect them. OK, of course, it has higher liquidity, so it's not only cheaper, faster, more scalable, but it's also more secure. It does this by steering payment from traditional fiat to fiat corridors to fiat XRP fiat corridors. But to make that work, it needs as much ripple net payment volume as it can get. Hence, we saw the XRP ledger payment volume. That is what's important to watch. That makes both bank payment volume and X rapid payment volume. 
<clears throat> or that includes both. Okay. So just run at the ref reference that. All right. Next up, I want to reference this now. So King Solomon, the Senate Banking Committee is expected to mark up Judy Shelton's nomination to the Federal Reserve next Tuesday. We'll see what happens. We know that she's, you know, a huge gold bug, historically speaking. Um, we also know that Trump, even what, 2003, 2008, a few years he was referencing, kind of going back to a, some version of a gold standard as well. Really interesting. Not really a surprise, though. I know many billionaires, of course, love precious metals in their portfolio, and they believe that the U.S. dollar should be backed by something. One to share that again this was as of and this posted april 28th of 2020 so we can see you know alongside Julie, judy shelton we can see christopher waller another fed nominee um, as we know and what's interesting is we can see i wanted to share this before moving forward um, so we can actually see this. A return to the gold standard would play play havoc with the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. Again, more than six trillion dollars due to the CV, the beer flu. All right. And again, she goes on to say, as we can see, back to her advocacy. So right here, telling the banking committee in February, I would not advocate for going back to a prior historical monetary arrangements and saying Congress has the ultimate authority to regulate the value of U.S. money. And then we can go down here instead of the Fed, and then just talking about, obviously, you know, defining the structure, responsibilities, and aims of the U.S. central banking system. And the central bank does not have the authority to use monetary policy for the purpose of devaluing the U.S. dollar. We know both her and President Donald Trump are, you know, anti-federal reserve. We'll see how this plays out. Just understand that this is going to have both macro and micro economic effects, and that's why I wanted to include it in this, whether it's precious metals or the valuation of anything. We're going digital. We know the central bank digital currencies are occurring. We understand that they're fixing their domestic rails awesome for real-time payments in that platform in the U.S. This is happening globally, and again, they still need to be interconnected. So, I'm going to actually include this link in the top of this video description. This is Real Lisa Daily on Twitter, and she does a great thread, plenty of sources to refer back to, talking about PolySign and then standard custody, these absolute behemoths. So I'm just going to kind of breeze through this, and please take a look at this. So perhaps some of you have been wondering about the difference between PolySign Inc. and standard custody. PolySign develops state-of-the-art, secure, scalable infrastructure for financial institutions to fully leverage their digital assets. Now, standard custody is where assets are actually physically stored. The trust is the entity which has permission to manage these assets. Okay, we can see various sites. Now, understand, Arthur Brito literally is like the founder, the starter, the guy behind PolySign and standard custody. This man is an absolute ghost. Him, David Schwartz, and many people developed the XRP ledger from scratch. So this man has no face to his name. Could be an alias. Who knows? There's tons of speculation and conspiracies out there. I just wanted to share that, guys. Um, assume there's many, many NDAs regarding this. But this is really interesting because for the Internet of Value, of course, we need regulations. We need custody to secure these assets. And then we need liquidity. Now, I also reference these guys as kind of one of the big custodial services along with Fidelity Digital Assets and many others. We know that places like BlackRock with $7 trillion assets under management. We know State Street holding $30 trillion, you know, dollars in value, you know, 10% of the world's wealth. All of this is going to be tokenized. So what do you think needs to be done? We can see PolySign symbol right here, kind of the uh, that dilemma for blockchain that we've talked about as well. It's very interesting. It's that symbol. And then we can see standard custody symbol. And notice that she even references that. You'll notice that the standard custody logo resembles the logo of the OCC. And look at this. Coincidence? And this is back. Look, 2002 handbook, Comptroller's handbook, and then as of May 2012. Just wanted to share that. Thought that was really interesting. So feel free to check this out if you're interested in more, cus you know, custodial services. And just understand, this is going to be a behemoth. Not financial advice. It's just my personal belief and many others. All right, next, Codius. Now I want to talk about this. For those of you that you know already know about it, great. But I do want to touch on this because it's going. To go into a future point. So Codius, an open hosting protocol, which makes it easy to upload a program, whether you want it to run on one host or thousands. It has built in billing. This means once a program is uploaded, anyone can pay to keep it running. So what's the benefit of this? Well, there's peer to peer hosting, there's decentralized applications. Okay. And again, this is currency agnostic. So it can be Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, whatever. Now, people kind of were talking about that other secret sauce besides interledger protocol and XRP. They're talking about Codius. Now, I'm not sure if Codius is a dead project or what um, to me it doesn't really matter because XRP is going to be solving a problem regardless but people are very very bullish and Codius talking about the derivatives market luckily 
for me, my investment doesn't rely on the derivatives market, but that would be very nice icing on the cake for additional you know, upside, which would be awesome, especially solving that problem, which does exist today. So smart contracts, of course, we can see Codius allows third parties to run it. We can see um, they can write the terms of their transaction in the code, but neither of them might trust the other to run it. So again, disintermediation, smart contract capabilities. Um, I believe, you know, look, any code, you know, any programming language, you know, Python, you name it, can talk to anything connected to the internet, built-in payments, secure. Okay, this is going to be very, very interesting as this kind of smart program platform. All right, now let's take a look here before we really get into the stuff and it's a little conspiratorial, so work with me here. Now, many people have seen this. So this is basically a visualization of the money markets or value in today. So we can see Bitcoin say it was, you know, 5 billion. We can see reached a peak of 14 billion in 2013. We can see silver is this little box. We can see Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, these little squares. Now we can see the companies themselves. We can see Berkshire Hathaway, Microsoft, Apple. This is all a total of $616 billion. You can see Alphabet, aka, you know, Google in this scenario. Scenario. The Fed's balance sheet when it was 4.5 trillion. Now we know it's well over 6 trillion, as we just read. We can see, you know, coins and banknotes, okay, 5 trillion. We can see commercial real estate, 7.6 trillion. Now, real estate overall is what? 217 trillion. It's a massive market. You can see gold, almost 8 trillion here. You can see narrow money. Okay, as we keep moving, all stocks, so it's over seven trillion, you know, 70, 70 trillion dollars. You can see US having 52% of this. All right, keep going. Broad money. Okay, so now $80.9 trillion. Now here's global debt, and I assume it's much more now. This has to be updated, but almost $200 trillion. All right, now work with me. Watch this. The derivatives market. The lo and look at all this. This is the derivatives market. So on the low end, $630 trillion on a notional contract basis. Derivatives market is a contract between two or more parties, guys. A lot of this is actually hard to, you know, Expect a lot of analysts say, you know, it's overvalued, but this is the low end valuation. Now let's look at the high end estimate of the derivatives market. We talk about them a lot on this channel. We can see the high end estimate for the value of all derivatives contracts is as high as 1.2 quadrillion dollars. The truth is no one really knows the exact size of this market. Look at this. I mean, we can scroll. This is the kind of high end. This is the low end. <laughs> then we can kind of look at gold. I just wanted to emphasize that now. Understand this is value that needs to be, you know, interoperable, exchanged all the time, moving over ledgers. So if it's cross border, there's a good chance that something could go over the XRP ledger. Now understand that the XRP ledger is not just a ledger like some competitors. It has a decentralized exchange. You can issue IOUs. You can tokenize assets on it itself and escrow XRP, further increasing the demand of the asset. Um, if XRP is the fastest option, it'll choose XRP. If not, XRP is burned. I, there's just so many things that can have a compound, compounding flywheel effect. All right. So we got that. We get it. It's big derivatives market. Awesome. All right here. Esoteric XRP. Now this is conspiratorial. I just wanted to share this because I found it interesting. So again, natural med 777 on Twitter. So XRP continuing XRP plus PolySign. Again, the custodial group, kind of the infrastructure itself, plus Codius is all the money. So Kendra Hill, we don't know how reliable she is, but this is just someone that was kind of a blogger, um, you know, kind of a acclaimed insider. I, you know, I'll believe it when I see it, but anything's possible. So the cross-border payments was just a test, according to her. She's saying that their true goal for XRP since the beginning, um, you know, is kind of a secret, is the $700 trillion global derivatives market. Okay, and as we can see here, she just said, you know, the true intentions of Ripple, the company, or whoever, whatever groups, of course, kind of why they believe that $50 billion was locked in escrow for the big boys. Who knows? I'm not going to pretend to know. I'm just bullish on XRP, and I love the technology. So right here, the true intentions of Ripple are to handle 100% of the transactions which take place in the derivatives market. So why do they not make this public knowledge? Well, for multiple reasons. The most important on being that they are not ready. They are missing a piece to the puzzle, and that piece is called Codius. Now, I am not sure, guys. I honestly kind of want to hear your thoughts. I think that Codius... You know, there's been talks that it's a dead project. Is that FUD? Who knows? But I still want to continue sharing this. All right. So now, as we go here, continuing continuing XRP, kind of the digital asset. We know the XRP ledger itself is the ledger. We know ILP exists. We know Codius could kind of be the smart contract platform for this, even though 
you know, there's various other platforms that could exist and also can be, you know, kind of currency or value agnostic. And we know Polysun can kind of be that infrastructure. And we know that standard custody is actually some physical infrastructure for those of the, you know, those that want to use it. So now tokenizing these derivatives is essentially all the money. Now she has some various videos. We know Miguel Vias, formerly head of XRP markets, was an executive at CME Group with the metals market. He understands developing liquidity. He understands how markets operate. He understands how to grow a market from scratch. So this guy was basically head of XRP markets, Ripple, low value. We'll see if our three other groups or SBI start putting high value over the ledger. Now, Susan Athey, she's a board of directors for Ripple. She's come out with various price predictions. She put out that price prediction for Ripple and cross-border dominance and you know, what was it like $6 or $30 per XRP for just that alone. And now she's talking about the 700 trillion global derivatives market. So this is actually in this video as well, another clip, and this is Anders Lundberg, definitely subscribe to his channel. He puts out some, you know, short and sweet clips from a lot of the people in the ecosystem. All right, next up right here. So this is just an opinion again, but I find it interesting. We have to entertain these thoughts. I think for Ethereum 2.0, that new update to be successful, and I'm bullish on Ethereum, I hold Ethereum, it has to scale from 20 to 2,000 plus transactions per second. Um, and again, or an option to settle with XRP. Otherwise, XRP plus Polysign plus Codius will take the cake. 100 trillion derivatives market cake, aka all the money. And Codius is still in beta. We'll see. I think there's going to be plenty of competitors. I'm not going to rely on this, but I wanted to share this just to show you. And again, visualize where are we? Let's see. Visualize just this. I'm going to scroll through it again. So we got Bitcoin, we got silver. Now let's just go to the derivatives market. Ready? Right here. Blue, low end, and then high end. Wow. Okay. Next up, we're going to finish up with this. So Matthew L-I-N-Y, with the oil markets in free fall and the petrodollar in crisis, essentially, I think it's pretty much dead at this point. We know what Rockefellers are leaving the oil industry. I personally kind of think this was all planned out. If you don't think that these wealthy, wealthy people had things you know, planned, maybe in 2008 it wasn't planned. But if you don't think, if you really think that history is repeating and they have no end game in sight, I don't know what to tell you. I guess we just have to agree to disagree. So right here, behind the scenes, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, has become one of the most influential people in the Islamic world. So I know some of us have seen this before, but I want to show you again. So right here, and I mean, I have this whole document pulled up as well. Look how many pages, 555 pages. We can see right here, Islamica 500, the 500 who make the Islamic economy. Check this out. So profile, Brad Garlinghouse, originally they did spell his name wrong, which is really funny. So sector, financial technology, USA, Brad Garlinghouse is the CEO of Ripple, who provides global financial settlement solutions to enable the world to exchange value like it already exchanges information. Love that. Giving rise to an internet of value, IOV, Al Raji Bank or yeah, Raji Bank, made its first cross-border transaction using Ripple. They use XRP for money transfers for banks. It means they can source liquidity on demand in real time without having to pre-fund Nostro accounts. For payment providers, this means that they can expand reach into new markets, lower foreign exchange costs, Forex costs, and provide faster payment settlement. Brad served as CEO of File Collaboration Service, Hightail. He was president, or president of consumer application at AOL and held various positions at Yahoo, including senior VP. He served as CEO of Dialpad or Diapad. Diaplad, excuse me, maybe it's spelled, I'm not sure, communications, held management positions at SBC Communication and Home Network and advisor to Silver Lake Partners. Brad currently serves on the board of directors at Animoto and Outmatch and has had other board positions at Ancestry.com and Tonic Health. Just wanted to share that, guys. Again, these are the people that are backing it. High profile individuals. These are not just, you know, some randos in the space. And I just believe that XRP due to tech, you know, technologically being superior due to not only proof of concepts, but integration with some of the biggest groups, some of the biggest technology providers that are also assisting the real time payments platform domestically in the US. I'm just saying whether, you know, they have a domestic use case. Awesome. But we know the real use case. It's cross border. And if, you know, some people want to believe kind of the Kendra Hill idea that it's meant to take over derivatives. Awesome. Me personally, of course, you know, you can take profit, de-risk, but uh, selling entirely for me, not an option. I want to hold because I believe that as utility grows, the sky is the limit for XRP. And I know that's kind of silly to say when we're sitting at 20 cents, but time will tell and time will see if it, you know, pays off well for me. So again, guys, I encourage you to question everything I said in this video. Do your own research. As always, be sure to like and share, and I will see you in the next one.